now is the time to see you today. and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing a thrift flip slash upcycling my old clothes video. I've done a few fashion related videos in the past. I did a thread up haul. I also did a video where I redid my fall wardrobe. Both of those you could probably notice a theme. I'm cheap. I am very cheap, honestly guys. I like to get a lot of clothes for a little buck. <laughs> I just really like to save money and I really like to find ways to spend less money to get good clothes. And so what I'm doing today is a thrift flip video. I went to the thrift store last night looking like a complete mess because I had ballet right then and so I was like running in to try to get stuff for this video. I spent a decent amount of time in there. I also grabbed a couple of items that um, I did not buy at the thrift store but that I wanted to upcycle anyways because they're either too small for me or I just didn't like the way they looked anymore. So let's go ahead and get started. The first item I will be thrift flipping are these sweatpants. So these sweatpants I actually got handed down to me from, I don't know if it was one of my cousins. As you can see, they are really nice sweatpants and they have nice ankles. I really liked them, but sadly, by the time I got them, I was already pretty much too small for them. It doesn't say, but I feel like they're probably a size 10, 12 and definitely do not wear 10, 12 anymore. So they're way too small for me. They don't even fit at all anymore. But I was thinking I can make cute sweat shorts out of them. But yeah, let's get started with this flip. All right, so to start off, I put the pants down on the table and I was marking where exactly I wanted to cut the legs. So basically I was deciding how short I wanted the shorts to be and then I just cut them with my scissors that I use for literally everything. <laughs> Once I cut them, I turned them inside out because whenever you are hemming anything, you always want to turn the thing inside out first. Then I folded over a little bit for the hem and pinned it, which makes it way easier to sew. Then it was time to bring in the clunky showing, showing? sewing machine and and it was time to thread it i used some gray string for this and then i thread the bobbin and then i threaded it as you do with a sewing machine <laughs> and then i simply sewed along each of the pant legs and then turned it right side in right side out i don't know and then i got some elastic and some black string now i'm actually using a flame thing a blowtorch, sorry, to seal on the edges. Obviously, be very careful if you do this. But then I basically sewed it to the elastic and then threaded it through the pants where the old elastic used to be. And then this is what it ended up looking like. I actually really like this. I wish the shorts were a little bit wider around the bottoms, but I can't really control that because they were already too small for me. And I love the way it turned out. The next thrift flip is going to be this crew neck, which I bought at the thrift store for $3. This is an Abercrombie & Fitch extra extra large in men's crew neck. And as you can see, it's pretty darn plain. Nothing really to it, which is perfect for my purposes. So obviously I'm not a size extra extra large in men's. That's for a fact. So I'm probably going to shorten the sleeves, shorten the pull things, shorten the bottom as well, and then add an elastic in the bottom to make it actually kind of similar to this where it has an elastic little waistband turn into something that I love. All right, so I had to do quite a bit of maintenance to this huge crew neck. The first thing I did was shorten the sleeves by chopping off the extra sleeve and then doing the same thing where I folded it over and pinned it. Oh, and here's me struggling so bad to get the string out <laughs> of the thing. <laughs> anyway, once I finally figured it out, I decided to put it on there and thread the bobbin, and I was doing great until... <laughs> Anyways, we're finally back on track here and ready to actually sew these. So I was hemming the sleeves the same way that I hemmed the shorts. You're gonna see a pattern of me hemming stuff because if you guys know, I am extremely tiny, so I need to chop a lot of stuff, fold it over, and hem it because I don't like the raw edits most of the time, but I also really don't like my clothes being too huge for me. So that is something that you gotta learn to do if you're tiny like me and you like to DIY clothes and buy them at the thrift store. So yeah, along with the sleeves, I also shortened the waistband, and then once I did that, it was time to add the elastic. So here is what it looked like, and then I folded it over a lot so that I could make an extra little loop, an area for the elastic to go through. And now it's time to bring in the elastic. I have this half inch elastic and I'm sticking a safety pin into it. This makes it way easier to weave it on through. So now I'm just using the safety pin and kind of scrunching it up and then pulling it out to generally get it 
through there eventually and once I pulled out the other end all that there is to do is sew it shut so I am sewing over the edge to make sure that the elastic won't come out and it's just one continuous thing I guess and then yeah here is the finished thing I really like this I wish I made it a little bit shorter you can't really tell about the elastic unless I'm kind of raising my arms like I was doing there but I do really like this it's a super cute and simple piece this one might actually surprise you guys but <laughs> this looks really funny right now but it'll look good in the end I promise these these are gap kids size 14 shorts so if you guys know me, you know that I do not like this style of shorts. I do not like shorts that go down to the knee or right below the knee. I just don't like the way it looks on me. I don't like the style. I think it makes my legs look huge. I just don't really like it. But I can alter these to make them exactly what I want. So the first thing I'm obviously going to do is cut the legs. And then I'm actually going to embroider on these. I'm very excited and I'm think they're gonna look really good. So the process with these shorts starts off very similar to all my other ones by chopping off parts of it that are too long. So I chopped off a decent bit of these shorts to make them into not booty shorts, but definitely shorter shorts, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> just with the longer shorts, I feel so restricted in my legs and it's so uncomfortable and scratchy and I just don't like it. But that's not what this is about. This is about the transformation. So I fold it over a little bit and I'm pinning it yet again. You've seen me do this, I'm doing it again. And now I have to thread the bobbin and I'm actually doing it successfully this time. Go me. Here I am trimming that and then all I have to do is thread it through the machine like I always do so many times because I have to change out the color constantly. I thought I was getting a cool angle by getting this up close shot but obviously my hand is totally in the way and you cannot see like any of it. You can just see my big blue sweatshirt. <laughs> So now I'm just turning it right side out or whatever, and the sewing part is pretty much done. Now all I have to do the, is the embroidery. Oh, there's me. And I am going to be pulling out my embroidery stuff. I did get kind of into embroidery at one point. So here I am threading the needle and then tying this little knot at the bottom so that it'll work, I guess, so it doesn't get stuck and pulled through. This is me attempting to show you how to do a French knot. Basically what you do is you pull it all the way up through the pants and then you go through and you loop it around twice. Then you stick it back into right next to where your original hole was and then you pull it through and it creates this cute little knot. So I repeated that a few times to make the center of my flowers and then I did a lazy Susan, no not lazy Susan, it's called the lazy, I don't know what it's called, but it's this stitch that makes a little, I always learned it as like the leaf stitch I don't really know but this is the stitch on the screen to look up if you want to know how to do that one but yeah this took absolutely forever I was just sitting here chugging through this it took so long but I think it's worth it for how cute it turned out it looks so cute this is what it looks like I only did one pocket because again it took so long and I kind of like the asymmetrical vibe to it it looks kind of like fifth grade, but I actually don't mind it because I feel like this kind of thing is in style right now, and I do really like the way it looks. Now we're going into an item that I don't really have an idea for yet, but these are the pants. So I got these pants. I paid, I think, $3 for these. I have no idea going into this. I might have to shorten them. I might have to taken the waist. I might add something fancy. I don't know. There's literally so much I could do with these. The opportunities are endless and we'll see what I end up doing. You'll know in three, two, one. I decided on the bleach idea. So here I go, grabbing my pants, grabbing some bleach, of course wearing gloves because I gotta be safe when I'm using bleach. And yeah, so this thing. Let's just say this does not end up going well. I know I'm spoiling it for you guys, but I'm going on with a toothbrush and some bleach, attempting to make a cool pattern on these jeans or pants. And it is looking kind of cool right now, but if you actually see what it looks like in real life, it looks really bad. So I was hoping it would end up turning like white or light blue, but it didn't. So here I am washing it to hopefully stop the bleach from going any further and just to kind of see what it would look like when I washed it. So I put it on a speed wash in my washing machine and then I decided to pull it out, obviously, when it was done. And this is what it looked like when it was done. Horrible. Not at all what I was hoping. So I went ahead and went over it with some of the areas that were really not as bold. I decided to just go over it again, see if I could get better, cleaner lines. 
and yeah i did this for forever this took me so long you guys don't even know Ugh, it took so long and it was so tedious and yeah this is what it looked like after the second layer and then i decided to try to fix it by using some white fabric paint and you can see how that went um not well guys that's really sad news but i think we have a fail on our hands let me just show you what it's looking like right now okay ew eh. this is what i was going for let me put up a picture right now yeah um <laughs> I knew that these pants would not look the exact same. I didn't know it was going to look this bad. Like, what the heck is this? It's so, a quick update on the pants. After giving up on them, I actually cut them into shorts, and then I actually decided to try to fix them up. So, I'm still in the process of trying to fix these things. I'm going to add more bleach so it's lighter and not as pinky, and then I'm going to add some black paint instead of white paint. It's actually looking a lot better now. It's still pretty horrible, but I'm hoping that it's going to look fine in the end. If you want to see how it's going to look, check out my community tab in a little bit. Last thrift flip for this video. So, the last thrift flip is this top. This says Prince and Fox is the brand. It's an extra small. So this shirt, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of stuff too, but I think it's going to look awesome. <laughs> So I continue to talk about my possible ideas for like two more minutes, but we're just going to jump right into this because this thing is already kind of complicated and I'm kind of nervous to try to explain it to you guys, but here we go. So the first thing that I did was chop off the sleeves as I've done before. Here I am with the pink thread <laughs> and I'm threading the machine and then cutting off both the sleeves. I am turning this into a short sleeve shirt instead of a long sleeve shirt. I don't really like long sleeve shirts that much and also I just think this would look cuter as a summery shirt. Just the color and everything give me summer vibes. So here I go. I'm hemming both of the edges of the sleeves. This part is kind of repetitive and tedious so I'm kind of going to skim by this but you guys have seen what I do. I just fold over the edge of all the things that I'm going to be hemming and then I just run it over the sewing machine with a color that closely resembles the fabric color. Well, whatever color I have that's closest. This pink ended up completely running out towards the end of this project and I had to switch to white but white is pretty much always a good base color if you don't have another color that matches. But this is what it looked like after it got all hemmed. Alright, so now is where it gets kind of confusing. I am marking off the spot that I want the highest part of my scrunch thing to do. I'm going to put up a photo right here. This is kind of my inspo. So basically, I'm taking some elastic, which I'm cutting to size, based on about how high I want the scrunch to go. And I'm folding it in half because I really just want a thinner elastic. So I pinned it all the way up, which I later realized was not necessary, and I could have just folded it over as I was sewing. But I'm basically sewing the elastic together in half. <laughs> Oh, guys, I didn't know this would be so dangerous. Focus on my hand. <laughs> you literally can't see the blood at all, but I pricked myself barely with the thing and I was joking about it. Anyway, this is what the elastic looked like. It actually turned out pretty good. I just basically just made it half the size that it was. I could have just bought thinner elastic, but I was too lazy for that. So instead I went through all the extra work. But anyway, the next thing I wanted to do was add some pink fabric, some pink spare fabric on top to make it look like the elastic was the color of the pink, if that makes sense. So later I realized that this is probably not very necessary and I could have instead just folded over the pink shirt fabric and then just made it not elasticy. but I don't know, this is how I ended up doing it. I think it looks cool. So yeah, I basically sewed it over and then I trimmed it and this is what it ended up looking like. It was kind of a pain and I had to do it a bunch of times because the elastic was quite long. And again, I didn't need to make it that long, but I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> but yeah, here I am working on that. This takes a very, very long time. What am I going to talk about while I do this? Um, it's been snowing a lot in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Me trying to make small talk with an audience that can't respond is really funny. Comment down below if you're getting snow where you are. Anyway, so now I am going to be ironing on a patch. So I have this little butterfly patch, which I actually had some of them to attach to a mask, to patch onto mask to make them cuter. But I had some extra ones. I thought this one looked super cute on this shirt. So I'm just ironing on this patch, pretending that I know how to use an iron. I don't really know, but I kind of made it work and I ended up figuring it out eventually. And yeah, that was the last step. I just ruched up the shirt and this is what it looks like. I actually love this one so much. I didn't think I would like it, but I really like it. It's cute. I'll be wearing it a lot in the summer. 
thank you guys so much for watching my thrift flips if you also would really love to see more of this comment down below also comment down below what your favorite thrift flip was crazy shout out from the last video thank you so much for commenting on my video and for watching if you want to be a shout out in the next video just comment down below thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys next friday bye